Hello ladies and gentlemen, back to our fifth week of the Collegiate Star League League of Legends CeeLo coverage. My name is Seaman Turn Johnson, I am here with the one, the only, the Asruf, uh, as we get locked and loaded for another and our final set of the weekend. It is none other than UC Berkeley and Cal State Fullerton, but first of all, Asruf, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well and I'm excited for this matchup because it's kind of a, a, a last minute game because our original scheduled matchup wasn't pulled in, so we thank Cal State Fullerton here and uh uc berkeley for stepping up and letting us join up in here to give a, a nice little cast for this sunday afternoon yeah definitely great to always have some uh, great matches coming up and this one has a lot on the line since we are in that six week swiss format you do need to end the season five and one or six and oh if you actually want a spurt into that conference playoffs and both these teams they're riding that line at the three and one record so far yeah, both teams 3-1. and one. This is a crucial game to make sure going to the last week, give them another chance to make it through into playoffs. Uh, there is a note here I just saw a minute ago that uh, Cal State Fulton is actually off a rebuilding year, it looks like, and they have finished in top three in the West before, but obviously they haven't done it in a while, and they're kind of hoping to live up to that legacy here coming into this match. After dropping one game, uh, they, they, they got a lot to play for now. And speaking of that one game, these two teams actually have quite a bit in common for this season. Uh, week two, it was Cal State Fullerton that lost to University of British Columbia. Uh, and then week three, it was actually UC Berkeley uh, that fell to that same University of British Columbia squad. So both of them may be looking to get a little bit of revenge going right on back uh, to the matches. Maybe look to see if they can come back against UBC in those conference playoffs. But there's still a little bit of ways to go as... Honestly, the West for this year has looked like such a solid region. Not sure if I'd call it the top region, because I think the North, uh, with the evil emperor himself, Drake Porter, and the Columbia College squad are still holding down the North pretty well, but the West is looking more competitive than ever. Yeah, definitely. And the West, for me, a lot of these schools are big in other games as well. Cal State Fullerton is actually the team that won the Vainglory tournament last season. And uh, UC Berkeley has no, been, been around the scene for feels like forever i know they've had a starcraft team and stuff like that so both these teams kind of have a, a the the background of esports and big clubs to back them up as well on their campuses at least for berkeley i know they have a fairly large following for just their recreational uh esports or video game club exactly and just having the support of your community can be so important when it comes down to just getting that extra little per push of effort that extra little push of motivation to go hard, train hard, because this season is very much you either do or die each and every week. You lose two weeks, you are just completely out of the picture, but it uh, does look like we will be getting on to picks and bans. Once again, with Cal State Fulton, they'll be taking up our blue side with UC Berkeley over on the red. And once again, playoff hopes are on the line. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see how the draft goes. If these Both these teams seem fairly solid in their play from looking back, obviously being 3-1 and one already of the season kind of putting it to some of the smaller teams maybe and then having a stumble against a uh, big school like the University of British Columbia but we'll see if they're going to go with standard bands or if there's going to be more niche pitch for these teams as we Ooh. see a zillion band come off at this top so there's a there's a curveball for you right away yeah but say if you want to talk about niche picks I'd have to say zillion a little bit far away from top tier in the meta at the moment but hey you combo with some of these stuff some of the stuff like the Galio that's been just on top of the meta as of late with stuff like the Rangar, which we just saw Hiyami over from Lords absolutely go on a tear with it. And maybe they're just trying to ban away specific members here. Maybe away from Prayer, maybe away from Kizek. Uh, so curious to see how that one actually does keep on going. But that is answered on the red side uh, from UC Berkeley with... Actually, no, that is Switch. That is UC Berkeley over on the blue side, rather. Uh, but either way, some other bands coming out. And yeah, they're really hitting this support position pretty hard. Yeah, they hit that Thresh ban right away, and then followed by a, a Triss ban. Uh, the, the the red side bans for Cal State Forward didn't seem a little bit more normal. Uh, Trist and Camille are very high high contested peers, uh, high contested as a Gangplank ban, ban comes out. Another highly contested pick for the top lane, giving top laners the ability to just kind of farm up and carry into the late game. But uh, yeah, it looks like the side of Berkeley really focusing on prayer, uh, making sure he doesn't get some supports there that might be really good for him as the last ban comes out as Tam Kench, another uh, fairly highly contested meta pick. Yeah, first thing to notice is also the Galio, which has just been pick or ban, not only in our collegiate scene here, but also up towards that professional scene, has made its way through the ban first rotation and also has been passed over from the side of UC Berkeley. And it will be going back over to the other side. That's a pick we haven't seen in quite a while. 
Yeah, Talia is kind of something that's been floating around, I feel like, in the pro meta. as something that you can pick when the, the mid lane is, like, the pool is kind of stretched. Like you said, Galio maybe gets banned, Zoe gets banned, things like that. So it's kind of interesting to see come out when you have some of those more, maybe, uh, higher uh, power champions right now, those power picks kind of floating around. But I guess uh, Fullerton, maybe maybe Kurzak here is, uh, has some secret formula he likes to play as Talia or something like that. Or it's just a comfort champion as well. You can always remember that. But the Varus... Definitely a meta pick right now. Probably one of the top tier ADCs uh, when you see things like Triss taken off of the uh, and the band base. Yeah, most certainly. Honestly, I don't think I've seen an ADC in the current meta that has been as high priority as the Varus. He's got the nice two-item scaling. He does pretty well in the laning phase. But those two priority picks on the Talia and the Varus, that leaves up the J4 plus Galio. Might as well be back in the uh, Season 7 World Championship meta is... Those two can together can get a lot of damage done around the map, especially against somewhat immobile champions like the Talia, like the Varus. Yeah, Varus is very uh, dependent on his teammates to kind of pull peel for him and uh, maneuver around fights for him to keep him safe because he's not very mobile. There's nowhere to escape as compared to the Ezreal that was picked up that has the, the arcing shift to get away. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if uh, this virus is going to have either a really hard time, I feel like, when Galio and J4 starts jumping on him, or if they're going to find some way to try and um, counter that. Braum helps a lot in that aspect because Braum is a really good peel tank, but he also doesn't block a whole lot of what comes from J4 and Galio. I don't believe you can block either of their ultimates because it's a body ult instead of a, like an actual uh, projectile. The Braum, though, pick, with the Orn still being on the board and no top laners picked on either side, does somewhat dissuade the Orn pick just a little bit. The ability to block out his ultimate and engage could be a very useful tool if uh, UC Berkeley was able to pick that up alongside both the Galio and the J4. Just so much engage, but Ezreal actually getting locked in uh, from UC Berkeley is a little bit of a head-scratcher for me. I feel like he definitely has been hit pretty hard with some nerfs. I know his Q percent damage went down. I mean, also we saw Lord's uh, last match onto Homecoming. Did an amazing job with it, but curious to see if they're actually going to be able to continue that success with the champion. Uh, Skarner also, that's one we've been seeing up a little... Wait a second. There's a Sejuani and a J4 on that side for UC Berkeley. There is, I just realized that, and that probably means we're going to see a J4 on the top lane, which we, is something we I don't think we've seen. I don't rem I've seen it in pro play, but I don't remember the last time I saw it. It's been a while, uh, and I've also seen it in the mid lane before as well, so that's a really... Uh, it's, I would assume it's going to top lane unless they're going to throw Galio in the top lane. And it actually leaves a really wide open place where they can where they want to throw it because I mean they're both kind they've been there before and you can kind of play them in different matchups. But it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. And it looks like are they going to pick a Mundo? Oh guys, okay good. I was like, are they going to pick Mundo? This is going to be great. I don't think I've ever seen Mundo in the top lane since like forever ago. So yeah, the Nar pick up there does actually feel f like a fairly good calculated response. Uh, coming out of the side for Fullerton, just because it's still the range into melee matchup, sure, J4 has some gap closers, but also if you get cataclysm in, you don't have to worry about Galio because as Nar, you can just jump out of it. So, uh, curious to see how that matchup does work, and yeah, this does look like we will be seeing a top lane J4 for the first time in quite a while. Uh, but also when you look on the other side of that rift, you still have the Braum, you still have the Skarner, still a lot of options here for the Fullerton squad. Yeah, and I do like the Morgana pickup, I want to say, as well, because it helps keep people safe against that Skarner. That Black Shield will help uh, negate the ultimate from Skarner, because it gives them the spell immunity. But obviously, if you burst it down, Tilia not the most useful at bursting down shields, especially if they rank it up early. So it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of plays out, because Skarner, Skarner normally wants to grab somebody in the back line, and I feel like uh, they're going to have a really hard time grabbing Ezreal out of the way. So J4 is going to mm -hmm. probably be the least tanky target that's left over so Skarner's gonna have an interesting time i feel here picking out who he wants to use his ultimate on and when to do it but the the brahm Skarner karma is also really really deadly you can chain cc so well with the two of them it's gonna be interesting if they're gonna be able to pick, find those picks onto the carry like ezreal or if they're gonna have to settle for a tankier target with his ult yeah and even a little bit before that you have such a mobile mid lane between both the teams you have the galio on the side for uc berkeley and then you have the talia on the side for fullerton both these mid laners could really just break open this map if they get that advantage and just roam everywhere. Yeah, that's the thing about having high mobility mid lane champions, or at least ones with fairly global ultimates like Galio, uh, Galio and Talia. Both of them able to get into the fights very quickly. It's going to really come down to uh, with Galio taking TP, and it looks like Talia is going to take the cleanse. Uh, it looks like 
Galio is probably going to have a little bit more. It, it's just going to who gets into the, the darkness first, I would probably say. Who gets into the fog of war and can activate their ultimate first is really going to depend on how things go. But I, I don't know if Talia can follow up as much uh, into the Galio if the Galio gets the alt off. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see that, that mid lane interaction. Are they both going to commit really hard? to uh, trying to counter gank each other, or are we going to see some things where they're going to go opposite directions, or one's going to try and push? Yeah, most certainly. And the one lane we really haven't touched on to our, like we talked about top lane, we got J4 Nar, should be a very interesting matchup, especially with J4 making his return to the top side. Uh, Skarner definitely being a big impact target, and then the mid laners being uh, so mobile, but this bot lane too, I mean, I initially had some criticisms for the Ezreal pick, but pairing that up with Morgana should make for a very interesting lane. Yeah, it feels like both lanes could be very safe in aspects, but obviously with a Morgana, if you can land a decent binding, it can be fairly devastating with the poke out. So if the Ezreal and Morgana can pair, pair together and get some poke, maybe onto the Varus, it can be really useful. But Braum, again, a very safe lane pick to go with the Varus, keep him safe and let him farm up to get those items that he needs to really help start carrying a team fight. It was certainly in. There's definitely plenty of carry potential on both sides for these squads, but only one of them can walk away with not only the game one win, but also with the full set winner here, sticks around the, in the tournament, has the chance to make it all the way to that conference playoffs. We're a loser. They're relegated to that team of cup, but with only 30 seconds left on our spec to delay, we'd like to take a quick moment to talk about something very near and dear to all of our hearts, and that is our wonderful partners, over at Twitch, and as always, nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in gaming to support collegiate esports from PAX East to West and many more events. The CSL would not be what it is today without the help and support from them. Be on the lookout for cool opportunities to get involved with Twitch in the near future, and be sure to show them some love over on our pages, uh, over on their pages rather, over on Twitter.com/twitch or Facebook.com/twitch if that is the way you roll. But uh, without further ado, we are going to hit that loading screen and. I really am curious to see what sort of uh, runes we do see coming out. I know that the Galio runes have kind of been back and forth, whether you take Spellbook, whether you take the Electrocute, and even going further with that, what does J4 Top take? Because I know he takes Electrocute in the jungle, but I uh, want to see how exactly you see Beer Claire going to stun the world with the return of Top Lane J4. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what he does take, and it looks like it is the Electrocute, so there's going to be the standard pickup for him, uh, giving him that little bit extra burst damage that can come through. Uh, it, I mean, Camille does really well in the Gnar because she's able to kind of push and bully him early on and, while having the mobility to dodge some of the damage. It'll be interesting to see if J4 is going to be able to accomplish the same thing by trying to, like, poke. I, don't, I, just, I just feel like he doesn't have the poke to deal with the Gnar, and the Gnar is just going to kind of ran, run rampant in this lane. Exactly, yeah. Like, whenever you look at that matchup, it's always uh, identifying how the melee versus range matchup is going to play out. So, uh, very curious to see if he's actually going to be able to come through with it. Maybe there's some things in scrims that uh, UC Berkeley is really feeling with the J4 top laner. Why they went that so early? Because I get that they were using that as a bit of a, a flex pick, showing it, making the team think that, oh, shoot, that's a J4 jungle. We can go ahead and pick our jungle, but. When it comes to the jungle matchups, I don't know if it's that important to really hide it to late. Yeah, jungle matchups are normally not, like, unless you're picking something that's going to get, like, hard countered, which most people don't do at the moment, because everybody's kind of sticking to the Jack, Sijuani, Skarner styles, maybe Grog is still every now and then. Mm -hmm. Kind of those tanks, like, you're not really concerned about somebody coming in to, like, hard counter your jungle. So, weird to see it flexed. We'll see how it pays off for the side of UC Berkeley here. Uh, Sunny 209 is going to be have J4 in his hands. Let's see if he can make something happen with this fairly unconventional pick for for the champion. Well, certainly a little bit of poke damage going down on this bottom portion of the map, but overall feels like it's going to be a pretty quiet early game. Blue side, uh, side of UC Berkeley will be picking up uh, the first Dominion Skarner portal throughout this match. A little bit of gold to go back in their pockets. Well, it's on the top side, uh, securing back and forth. So. Once again, nothing too crazy, and no actual vision being traded back and forth in the early stage of this match. Yeah, it's a little interesting to see kind of everybody playing relatively defensively. And also, to point out, you did mention those spell books earlier, uh, or runes earlier, that is. Uh, there is a spell book on this Skarner, so there is no Predator like you see on some Skarner picks. So it's going to be interesting to see how he decides to change his spells out as the game goes on. If he's going to try and get rid of Smite early on, or if he's going to hold on to it for uh, lots of junglers to get rid of the smite to have something like 
uh, ghost to close gaps and stuff like that when you have your uh, when you go for the tracker's knife because obviously you don't need the uh, smite to get the like ch challenging smite or frost smite you don't need you don't get that advantage of having it so in some instances they like to switch it up early to try and make impact plays using a different summoner. Yeah, most certainly. And, like, we've seen Lyra, I know, do it a few times over on Clutch Gaming. Uh, swap out the Smite on Skrinder for stuff like the Ghost, you said. Also, like, the Cleanse. If you really want to get to that backline, there is no better way to just break through all the CC than just being able to walk through it either way. But uh, as our lanes do start playing out, it does look like the mid lane is going fairly in favor of the Talia pick. That was a Galio picked into Talia. So even though Galio, like, is the number one blind pick at the moment... Uh, that he did elect to take that matchup here, and that's also Noodles with the minion dematerializers, and that's something that uh, quite a few mid laners and ADCs alike have been resorting to when you really want to win that pushing matchup. Yeah, helping to clear out those ways relatively easily, easily, and then secure uh, cannon minions as well if you're having in issues in some lane. sort of odd matchup. But yeah, the little fights happen in the top lane already. Looks like there's a Sedwani up there, too. She looks like she's not going to go for anything, though. Quite yet. Yeah, so we'll definitely be keeping an eye on the uh, legendary J4 pick in the top side of the map, but it does look like that was the start of the Corrupting Potion, so just something they get Sony through that laning phase just a little bit, bit better. I believe he will probably be going uh, back to the tried and true method. Uh, picking the Black Cleaver up first, have a little bit of tankiness, have a little bit of damage, and then maybe we'll see where he goes from there, because... I mean, still, there's the J4 Galio combo is so deadly. Taunt goes on across the noodle. He is locked up. He is smacked on down. And top lane's even fighting Demasi and has to jump out of the way. As that is one healthy J4 and one not quite so healthy Nar in the top side. Demasi might actually have to burn the TP to get back into that lane. Yeah, it looks like the he got the wave, wave pushing up top and it caused him actually some problems because J4 using all those corrupting potions got his health back up and was able to try and deflect Gnar off of the wave and has kind of froze it under his own turret and forced that Gnar to go back early. Demacian, probably not happy about that one. It's not not where you want to be in the Gnar. You kind of want to be bullying it as the fight comes in. And Sony's going to, once again, the electrocute goes on across, but Demacian is going to trade back the damage. And Sony does not have the Corrupting Potions anymore in his pocket. He has to just sustain on through, and Demacian, he is making him pay for all the hardship he was just put through. And... So that should be a bad spot for someone to actually try and back in. Sure, it's never ideal, but at least he does have that 31 to 23 CS advantage currently on the top side of the map. Is uh, really the last big CS differential in these laning have to be this bot lane uh, going in favor for Fraser uh, for CSFU. Oh, that's a, goes that on in. Is that dumb? Man. He is sitting right in the middle of four people, but here comes Sony. He's gonna have to flash on forward. Knocks up prayer, but he's currently running through with the exhaust on both members. Prayer would have to burn the flash, but no flash does exist, and that is first blood. Going over to the UC Berkeley squad. Turkey Master gonna be pretty happy to walk away with that one. But now, uh, with the infernal drag up and on the board, that does look like it will also uh, be going the way of this UC Berkeley crew and Sonny. Finally making the pick work out. Maybe that was the plan all along. Use it, grab the first dragon, and bang, bang, bong. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting uh, turn of events there, actually, because it was Bam on this Skarner that decided to start off the Infernal Dragon and kind of got scouted out by uh, Is That Them on this Galio. And he just came in and he landed a beautiful three-man taunt there to kind of disrupt the fight entirely uh, and then allowed his team to come back in and kind of clean up that clean house. And the left Varus, again, that, that lack of mobility on that hero or that champion is really, really noticeable in fights early on when people can just run at him and get on top of him. There's just no way out. There's no way to put, peel out of him for that. Yeah, and some pretty good prizes being picked up at the end of that also for the rest of UC Berkeley. Logan Milk and uh, Milk T did get so much vision on the bot side of that jungle. Going to be able to track Bam so effectively for these next few minutes. And uh, like we were talking about before, Prayer did have to burn both the flash and the heal during that last fight. Didn't even get out for it. But that could be a potential ganking path for Logan if he wants to really follow up on this gank. Keep his balling in the positive. 
Yeah, and the bot lane out. The, their bot lane dropped all four summoners, where was, uh, only Rafflecopter used flash and exhaust. Mm. Turkey Master has both of his. He can be looking for some plays there himself. Uh, again, Ezreal with that mobility. That's why he's still so popular. Is because of that arcane shift and your ability to kind of dance around the edge of fights and control your own positioning uh, is really really helpful on on uh, ADC when you're trying to when you can't rely on your support sometimes to be able to get you out of every situation. Giving yourself an extra ability to get out is really helpful. Ooh, so he does it. The ultimate Demacian does, has to. Is he going to hit Mega A? He's getting so low, but the hop, the skip, and the jump out is going to keep Demacian alive. As Sonny is really proving that this J4 pick does have a place in the meta. But uh, check out the bot side because here comes Logan Milk T. He does have the ultimate available. Is not seen just yet, but they might knew something is up. Still no flash available on the prayer. Stand United going to come on across the body block. The shield is just not enough. Can't stand behind Brahm and Turkey Master will be walking away with his second kill of the match. And even mid lane getting a little bit of the action. Bam making his way up here, but looks like is that um, we'll be having an all right spot. Gets a bit of a shove out the door, but either way, he's going to be doing pretty fine. Yeah, Noodle showing, or C Noodle showing that he knows how to play the Talia matchup in the Galio as well. Abusing that range, knowing that the. Uh... The help from the Sejuani's bottom, uh, he's able to go in a little bit there, do some damage, try to bully as much as he can as his teammates are kind of in a rough spot in that bot lane as this, uh, Ezreal Morganicom is working out fairly well for them as as all the roams came down to help him out, obviously. But they're they're sitting pretty. 2 0 at uh, 8 minutes in, 8 minutes 30 seconds. You're, you're pretty happy right now. Yeah, and he's actually got the 1k gold lead in the lane. and. Sure, his spikes are a little bit harder to hit than the Varus's, where Varus just really wants to hit the Rage Blade, plus probably Wit's End to uh, to boot. Turkey Master is looking for the upgrade of Mermana for the Triforce, for these big ticket items. And I mean, already being 1k ahead in the game with the Kleptomancy still even further boosting his uh, gold score, just the amount of gold he's got in the pocket. It's got to be feeling it pretty darn good for them. And it feels like everywhere except for the mid lane, UC Berkeley is having a pretty solid time, but that mid lane C Noodle is playing that matchup very, very well and uh, could turn into a lot of issues come the time for these roams. Engage up on the top side. Let's shoot. Demacia is already half HP. Has to turn tail and run, but Longin, he does have the ultimate. If he can land that, will be the kill, but no. Here comes the Weaver's Wall to keep Demacia alive as Bam's also making his way up towards the top side of the map, but. That was the Talia ultimate. Weaver's wall is gone, but why is that dumb? He still has his old heroic entrance. Could be used here on one of these plays. Yeah, and that was actually a really good ult to save his teammates there as uh, the ultimate from Sichuani was also thrown there. So uh, a good, good heads up play by C Noodle, knowing that his teammate is in trouble up top and able to rotate up there to keep him safe as a fight breaks out in the jungle. Maybe just a vision war, it looks like. Yeah, just a friendly how you do, punch you in the face. Uh, nice, nice conversation between the junglers. Demacian still going to be trading back pretty effectively on the top side. I mean, hasn't died just yet. Certainly has been getting chunked out quite a bit, but that really hasn't ended up in a very different vision score. And made the prediction earlier that maybe this is going to be a uh, Blade of the Ruin, uh, not Blade of the Ruin King, but the Black Cleaver build coming out from J4. But no, he is going for lethality, it looks like. This should be a fun one. Demacia oh, doesn't get knocked out, but the Cataclysm and the Slam, the Jam, the Whatcha, ma'am, and that is a dead Demacian. That's Nar going down on the top side. Three kills now, and I mean, we're talking about not having a physical advantage yet for Sony, but hey, that's where you get one. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's doing. Is he's he he was literally waiting for Cataclysm to come off cooldown, waiting for Ooh. him to poke out the Nar. To Turkey get Masters to got the fancy in. feed. Kizak's not gonna be able to find absolutely anything. Whiffs the Q. Whiffs the ultimate and is just unable to lock down Turkey Masters at all and actually tr might trigger a bit of a counter attack, but no, everyone's going to be walking away from Mott's side, uh, really nonetheless. The one thing I do want to point out, though, too, for that top lane matchup is Demacian went Mercury Treads, which is really, really odd for me to see when you're playing against someone like J4 early on. I guess there is a lot of magic damage coming out, but I, I just feel like that's a that's almost a waste of gold early on when you... The only person that's really been dealing with him this entire time is Sunny, and he really needs that. I honestly needs a frozen mouth to help keep distance. I feel like, but he needs something to, to do damage and stay alive here. And uh, Merc Treads are not going to really help you against J J4. Yeah, he's kind of thinking maybe one step too far. Uh, the Merc Treads would definitely help if you had a gank up from Sejuani, all the kind of stuff. But 
first you gotta figure out how do you deal in lane against this J4 and you just not really find an out away. It does look like it will be the more traditional build of the Black Cleaver probably into that uh, Frozen Mallet for the side of Demacian. And yeah, I do think that once he's got those items uh, in his back pocket, he should be doing pretty well. But already also the Tiamat for Sony means that uh, UCB is going to have a pretty solid control of at least his top part of the map. Yeah, and as we see teams kind of fighting for vision right now, that second Infernal Drake is up. Obviously, uh, it was the side of Cal State Fullerton that started it last time and ended up going over to the side of Berkeley. We'll see if Berkeley wants to start it up this time, but it, it did look like the, the side of Fullerton really trying to get vision around there, using the plants to, to clear out vision, using all of their vision there, it seems like. Everybody's got eyes on this Infernal Dragon. Um, and both, both top laners do have TP, so it'll be interesting to see if, if Sunny's going to be able to poke out Demacian here or not before a fight happens or when this fight's going to actually start. Yeah, and do keep in mind that this is a fight around the bottom part of the map, and there's a big discrepancy between these two ADCs. Turkey Masters already completing the first item, has the Sheen in the pocket as well, whereas Prayer, he has not finished his Rage Blade just yet. Here comes the Weaver's Wall into the pit, but that's going to block his own team off from actually getting into the Baron. Heroic Engines comes on across, and Bam's now getting locked down. Chains of Corruption lands on the Rough Copter, but that is the death going down onto Bam. The ultimate comes out there, and the jam, the slam, the two-man Cataclysm lands down onto the backline. Para has absolutely nowhere to go, and he's going to get dropped as well. Akizek is just running for the hills at the moment. Sony's going to try to make something happen here, but it doesn't look like too much. Dark Binding lands on absolutely nobody, and this is just great coordination coming out from UC Berkeley. Yeah, you see Berkeley having a much better grip on what they wanted to do in that fight, coming in with their three three man or three four man to start it, and then uh, Galio comes and makes that heroic entrance after the fight starts Ooh. to keep Skarner out of the fight. But that that wall from Talia, I feel like hurt the side of Fullerton more so than anything because they couldn't do anything in the fight and they just kind of were left just sitting there waiting for this uh, Cal. Uh, for this Berkeley team to come in and clean them all up. Like, Skarner was just in no man's land, and Nar, I believe, teleported somewhere in lane. So the TP from Sunny on the J4 was much closer to the fight. Yeah, and that definitely was a bit of a head scratcher for me, especially with the Talia ult, because I actually had to do a double take. I was like, wait, isn't the Talia on the uh, side for uh, Fullerton? And that definitely did feel like an ultimate that secured the dragon in favor for UC Berkeley. And then, yeah, like you said, they weren't a actually able to turn anything around. Uh, looking on forward, and these are big performances coming out from both Sunny and from Turkey Master. They're just keeping this game going, and I personally can't think of any better way to start the game than five kills to zero, one tower, and two infernal drags uh, going for your team. So definitely a big, long, winding, and uphill road for the side of Fullerton if they want to come back in this one. Yeah, and, and it, I want to praise the side of Berkeley for their vision. They've been very, very adamant about Ooh, clearing Sunny's it out, going back well again. He does there. have... A good amount of lethality, but here comes the TP that will be the jungler. That is Bam. He's got a lot of CC. Yeah. Ultimate is still available. That is going to be one very deadly Sunny, but it, oh, he gets so much damage back on the Mossy. He hits the Cataclysm and he gets the kill. Ultimate comes out from Turkey Masters as well with Ultimate coming from Optocopter as well. Might be looking for the three-man combo on this top side. And you see Berkeley, they can do no wrong. Eight kills to zero. This is just such insanity all across this map. And on top of that, Sunny walks out alive. Yeah, that that was quite quite impressive of the of the uh, one on two play there. Not a really afraid of the teleport coming in. I'm sure he was probably confused at who it was at first, but uh, it was not the Nar. And as we fight in the middle, is he gonna? Oh, okay, good. He's just cleaning the wave. I was like, is he gonna get beat down by the Scalio and just a straight one v one? At at this point, it feels like that's all Berkeley's doing is just bullying Fullerton around. But uh, yeah, he just calm, collective play from Sunny. Waited there, gets the knockup. Cataclysm ends the Nar, and the Cataclysm wall keeps him safe. Sorry about that. Our alarm was going off at the time. <laughs> yeah, the alarms definitely are ringing for the side of Fullerton at the moment. Because, yeah, like you said, they have no advantages absolutely anywhere on this map except for mid lane. Noodle is the only one consistently holding down pressure. And where can they actually co oh, come oh. back? Kizek very nearly gets that steal. I don't think the Q actually landed. But if it did, I believe it actually took that away because Longin smited just a tad bit early. But Sony now, too, with the... Oh, God, I haven't even seen that item in so long. I've forgotten the death... Di not the death stance. It's the Dustblade of Drakthar. Dustblade, yeah. Dustblade of Drakthar completed onto Sony. So if you thought he did damage before, he does a little bit more damage now. 
Yeah, definitely. He he he's definitely putting out quite a bit of damage into someone that doesn't have too much armor in this Nar. He only has one cloth armor and uh, nothing else really. Does the Sterics give you armor? It no, it does not. not. It's just just HP, a little bit of scaling too. Uh, but, oh, Sonny, he already knows who he's going to go for. Demacia already has to use the jump. One combo, and he's basically dead, but he's... Oh, Ooh. the plant gets Demacia out of the way. Sonny's not going to be able to hit the Cataclysm, but the poke at the end with the Q does end up keeping that one alive. And uh, Dragon's up here in two minutes, and, of course, the RNG Lords have looked down on us with please, with pleasure, and have granted us three Infernal Drags to start this game off. And, yeah, Fulton, they are going to be... Uh, very much reconsidering everything after this match, because this is a very horrible way to start off game number one, but uh, still, game's not over yet, Tower's still standing, still have the inhibitors, still have the Nexus, Baron's not done just yet, and even if this game goes over, they've still got another game to go, but here comes the engage, Logan, t Milk is trying to look for C-Noodle, that's gonna be something just completely demolishing C-Noodle there, he didn't even get a chance to hit the ground, a uh, solid game of volleyball is Harold and Shelly, to help out the rest of this Berkeley squad with the bot tower, but Sonny, they've dragged him in, but who's engaging on who? You got that rogue charge going on, oh. and it lands on all three people, plus a taunt on three. Pairs the only one left outside of that taunt is two members now, three members fall from the side of Fulton, and they're gonna keep on going. The stun does lock Demacia, and oh, one more shot away, but he does end up getting out in the end, as the Berkeley squad basically get away with murder, still touting the perfect game at the moment. Falling inhibitor, it could be going down pretty dang soon here. Yeah, that was just... Berkeley are almost playing with their food at this point. That was a three-on-five fight for the majority of it, where it was just... It started with just uh, Sunny and uh, Laga and Milk Tea, and then obviously the Galio is that them making the entrance in there. But that's all who was there, and they took out three people in a three-on-five, essentially. Obviously, the a few people from Fulton trick filled in a little bit later there, but they almost got four kills there. Uh, it felt like, and it was just, th this J4 pick is exactly what we saw, or what I've seen in LCS with the Camille picks. They come out to do the damage to Nar, to force that pressure, to make Nar not just comfortable sitting in lane and farming, or bullying someone like Gangplank, and it's working out exactly how Sunny wants it to work. It feels like he's very re relaxed in how it works. Obviously, some of that 1v2 outplay in bottom as well, it's just ridiculous. He's just uh, very, very calculated in play, and just knowing how? as he sits here in a bush looking for another kill. Time for the angel question. How many people does it take to kill the J4 in the top lane? Just one combo. Doesn't mean he's a cataclysm, and he's already having a gun. Oh. The flash away, Sony. He's going to turn this one around. He's got the cataclysm down onto two members now. TP comes on in. And this could be the perfect game going on the way, but Sonny is going to look for the damage. c is not able to find the kill as one member falls already. That is Demacian gone. Kizak, he needs to run for the hills, but Dark Binding it lands. No cleanse away, and that's just a little bit too early. Is are going to be able to push people back off the end of that play, but Fulton, they're not going to find anything as a result. All four members now from UC Berkeley up on this top side. Oh, oh bam, he doesn't Black land shield. the ultimate ruffle copter with a perfectly predicted uh, black shield to keep his team and most importantly the perfect game still alive as 20 minutes in Baron is on the board and there's still not a single death or tower down for the side of Berkeley yeah and there's a 10k gold lead to boot as well as the three infernal drakes buffs this has got to be the perfect game if you're if you're sunny right now this is just like oh man I get three infernal oh drakes and they found and bam everybody. out here in the jungle one stun and that could be it because turkey master he's still doing putting down quite a few deep Oh, uh, little T is going to be coming along, but here comes Heroic Entrance. It only lands onto Brahmus. Turkey Master is uh -oh. getting nuked out pretty hard on the side. Demasi looking for a way in on the flank. But no, they turn around. They found Kizak. He's not going to be listening too much longer. Turkey Master almost goes down there. Is that them now at risk of demolishing the perfect game? They find it. They find the kill. Two kills going on over his. This is now UC Berkeley in full retreat. Sonny, he's got the TP, but he's currently still on that bottom portion of the map. And... Fullerton might have just won themselves a Baron. Yeah, I I don't know if they have enough health to do it, because somebody's going to have to go back to deal with the J4, because he's going to take down that tower super quick here. But also, that was a 4 on 5. That'd be why the side of Berkeley lost it, because Sunny's just been pushing the spot lane the entire time. He does end up getting a turret. They do, lo they do lose two players of their own, but uh, just... Uh, just probably maybe a little bit overstepping from the side of UC Berkeley. Probably not needing to be that far deep or to call in the teleport from Sunny earlier to secure that fight. But again, they still get a tier three out of it. It's not too terrible, but a good fight nonetheless from the side of 
you, uh, Fullerton being able to finally come back into this a little bit and finally get some kills on the board is uh, it's kind of a breath of relief. It may not be the fact that this is the the perfect comeback going on right now, but it's definitely it, it calms you down a little bit, yeah. allows them to refocus, and hopefully will allow them to take another fight here shortly. I mean, the journey of a 10k gold deficit has to start off with a single fight, and that might have been it. Sonny's going to go right on in. Cataclysm goes down. Alechku did so much damage. Demacian just barely going to get away as Redemption comes out. Maybe trying to put a little bit more damage on that fight, but isn't going to find anything anyway. But that does mean that Berkeley's basically going to have full control over this Baron Pit, and they're going to start it up. Yeah, the flash force out from Demacian uh, there. If he didn't flash, he was going to die. But that damage that that, that Sunny is doing on the J4 is just relentless. As again, he's going to do exactly what he needs to. Put the pressure on the bot lane, so they're going to pull the aggro from the side of Fulton away from Baron, where they have no idea what's... I mean, I'm sure they know it's going on, but they didn't have vision, they didn't have any control over it, and they, there's nothing they could do about it. Yeah, with that fight, they still need to be careful because one more death or two could put a bit of a stalling on this game, and if you want to point out uh, one area where there could be comebacks, a good fight from CSUF, especially you get a little bit more skill on a prayer, and they might not be out of this one just yet, but... I have to tell you, it is still looking incredibly dire right now, as with Baron Buff, a uh, bottling inhibitor exposed. They're just going to be running these waves right on into the base. Yeah, and I, uh, they have decent wave clear from the side of UC Fullerton, but there's one thing that I feel like is missing this entire game, and they have a Skarner, and I feel like I've seen zero successful Skarner alts, or at least ones that have turned in the gank, or kills successfully at least. It just, he, he feels like he's almost not there. He has this righteous glory. He has the ability to run in and pick people off. But there's, he doesn't have anybody to grab or the support to follow up on the damage. Or when he does try to grab someone like Rafflecopter, the Black Shield comes out, which again, I pointed out earlier, I, I really do enjoy that pick. It's maybe not as meta as it, as, it, as it has been in the past, but I feel it's a really good pocket pick against something like a Skarner who is just mm -hmm. so reliant on that alt. And we're seeing here, without that alt, Skarner just kind of struggles the entire time. Yeah, and honestly, my favorite interaction this entire game was when uh, Bam actually was had the Skarner ulti onto Sunny, dragged him in, and then there was just the Galio ultimate on top of it. And who's engaging on who? No one knows anymore, but uh, this is going to be a lot of pressure being applied by the UCB squad. Pressing on both the top and the bottom side. There are two members down here from each side. Sunny's going to go back to the back line. See, Noodle has to pop the Zonius, but he might not be up too much longer. As there goes the Cataclysm, ulti comes down. Demacia is going to be dropping as well. Two members down is... Now it looks like the rest of the squad's gonna be fighting on the top side, but Prayer's getting out some good damage on that other side of the map. Two members though, barreling in towards the Nexus. Doesn't matter if you win this fight, you still need to save the base. Another kill goes down and Braum is no longer there. First Nexus Howard does fall in here. Sonny double flashes away, Redemption comes on down. It might be enough and that actually Ooh. does kill Prayer himself. Sonny trying to finish off this last fight, had the KDA. Just a little bit, but that's going to be UC Berkeley turning their attention to the Nexus with all but one still alive on that opposing side. And just a few more shots on the Nexus, and that will be UC Berkeley walking away with game number one here against Fullerton. And yeah, that looked really convincing. Yeah, that was, uh, we were, we may have talked about how we were concerned about the J4 in the beginning, but obviously Sunny doesn't, did not come to mess around. He came to dunk Nars into oblivion and force him to have almost zero to no impact on this game, except for the one team fight where he was there and Sonny wasn't. And that just that was a story of a top lane just rolling through everything and then having the team comp to follow it up as well. Like you said, the the great, uh, the Galio ulti coming in to f clean things up uh, when Sonny was grabbed by the Skarner the one time. Who's engaging who is right. There's just, it, Fullerton just felt like they were on the back foot the entire game. And I feel like part of that is that Scar is that early attempt at Dragon where Skarner tried to do it solo and then the rotations came from mid, uh, mid and bottom, but wasn't enough. And they just hurt themselves so much and put themselves so far behind. They just didn't have any real, uh, any other openings to come back. I mean, yeah, honestly, like, after that one uh, dragon play, it just felt like there was no actual... There was no win left in the sails for the side of Cal State. And uh, honestly, there, I don't... I'm, apparently, after this match, UC Berkeley, they're showing that, no, that wasn't a flex pick. That was why J4 is the top top laner in the current meta, or at least Sony's making it look so. But uh, after making it look so easy, we're going to have to go to a quick intermission before game number two. And 
I'm going to guarantee you, J4 is probably not going to be in this next one, but either way, we'll catch you guys in just a few minutes here. Make sure you stay tuned, so we got some great League of Legends coming to you in a bit. See ya. Once again. 